27th, 2017. Uh, first item on the agenda is the approval of last week's minutes. I admit with the combination of it being Thanksgiving week and my trying to get the closing organized this week, I didn't read them, so I'd like to take them. Sure. Uh, community input? Okay, department head, George. Department head, <laughs> definitely head, not heads. <laughs> Really? Uh, this was not intentional. Cold back to the people who moved the truck a little bit and came in over too much snow. I'm sorry, what? I had to cold patch to patch yes. over and he put a little bit more in the truck than it was supposed to when I went too much. So I had delayed pick, uh, delayed uh, put your sauce. Oh, I see. You thought it was going to be under 200. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. charging, they're charging us taxes, and I told, I called. Uh, Fight. You no, know, I actually called uh, Caroline today, and she's going to look into it. I don't know if they've been charging for taxes all year, but I believe we're exempt from that. Okay. Well, that's a good thing to follow up on. Thank you for that. And then there's eleven dollars on that particular push sort of alone. So if they did that all year, there's some money coming back to this town. It should be. Well, that would be nice. We'll see. Yeah. I'm not going to count those eggs just yet. Right. No, but it was on there, and I was a little surprised when I saw it. Okay. Um, we to accept purchase order 985 to Bike Industries for cold patch for the amount of $213.80. I will second that. Any questions, comments? I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 I have a second purchase order and I broke it up uh, from the off woods tree service for the chipping of the brush at the transfer station for nineteen hundred dollars and if you want to remove the compost pile at the transfer station for another nine, so a total of twenty eight hundred. Okay, let's put this on the floor that we can discuss. Do you want to separate it? No, no, just do the whole thing. We'll talk about it. Okay. Uh, 20. Uh, move to accept purchase order 984 to York Woods Tree Service. Correct. Okay. For uh, $2,800. Thank you. I'll second that. So I do know that there's money in the, that one to cover this. And so you've got it in two pieces, thank you, so that we could decide whether you go. Uh, what is, so the part that's the, that's critical is the chipping. Correct. Correct. So that's the, the 1900, 1900. Uh, talk to us about removing the compost pile and what. Apparently they, they've done it in the past and they've done it every year. It's, I guess it makes room for more in the future, so that's why I brought it up. Yeah. I wasn't aware of this until I spoke with them, actually. Yeah. And, uh, they say there's not too many people to take any of it. So it just keeps building and building. Well, uh, I, I think that that's true. You'll, you'll know more as you right. manage this going forward. But, you know, as someone who uses compost in, in a vegetable and fruit right. garden for, to produce food, I would not take compost from a transfer station. I understand I, it. I understand. Yeah. So, I mean, that's why I put it in there, and I believe it probably ought to be taken away because that's what they've done with Snow White. Yeah. Jody, do you have a, a problem with covering the whole thing? It's in the budget. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, it's on the table for the full, what is it, 20, 28? Yeah. I'll just put that in. That's what's on the floor. Uh, I will call the question. All those in favor, say aye. 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 You know, and as the year progresses, if you have another idea about that stuff, you can always right. come and I mean, talk to us about it. But I, 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 I understand. That, I understand. You know, I might do it if uh, I had a Christmas tree farm or something and it wasn't going to food production. I needed a mulch around the trees. Okay, I might do it. But not for anything associated with food. Mm -hmm. That? Yes. You just get your purchase order, so you're good to go. Okay. And I spoke with Caroline about just 
for the holidays. Yeah. Um, for two reasons. I'd like we'd like to put the, the Friday after Thanksgiving off instead of uh, Martin Luther King Day, and that's because Martin Luther King Day in the middle of winter, better chances of having a snowstorm and, and again trying to happen. And that's just something we brought up. I mean, we talked about at, you know, at night and uh, you know four day weekend on you know, Thanksgiving yeah. instead of that. Yeah, day. sure, it's understandable. It's nice to have a four day week. So, so our our uh, holiday schedule is is set by the personnel right. policy, and you can take a vacation day. You know, so I, I don't know, Jody. What what is your sense? Yeah, it would end up being a vacation day. You can't swap holidays. Um, okay, but, that's what we wanted. Yeah, if you could no, that holiday. Totally, you can always ask, but yeah. it would have to be for the whole town, and so we don't want to go back to the drawing board at this stage right. of the game for. But one of you is going to have to be on call. Oh, which we know, no, and that wasn't the, the case. Yeah, the case no. is yeah. one thing, if we end up with a snowstorm on the holiday, we'll be paying time to have, this would eliminate, you know, that. I mean, there's a better chance in January for a snowstorm than there is in the Sure, correct. Sure, and that's what we were looking at, and, you know, we were looking, yeah. you know. You know, I appreciate your coming and, and talking and asking because it's good to know what's important to our employees, uh, and we'll, we'll we'll think about that going forward. But right now, the you know, I, like I said, we just want to bring it up and see yeah. if there was a possibility. And yep. you know, there's you could absolutely take the day, and I I would do it myself. You know, it's one of those you know, days where it's nice. Right. You know, just one one vacation day, you get yourself a right. four day weekend. Well, no, I, I I wasn't worried about taking a vacation day, but I didn't know. If yeah, no, we won't. It, we, it's uh, that would. Open up a management issue for us. No, and so. you know, that's the only thing. You know, I just wanted to bring that up. So. Oh, I have nothing else, anything for me. Nope. Enjoy your green snow pro on oh, Wednesday. Yes. I'll miss you at the storm, Seacoast Stormwater Coalition. But, uh, how is um, transferring phones? Have you guys worked out that yet? Or how is Ed's going to keep his own phone and he's already gave his number out to He's not worried. He wants to use his phone. Okay. And so, how is the police and the fire going to know who's on call? We will schedule that. We will have a schedule when we do anything. Okay. I, you know, unless I'm doing something, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm closer, so I'll be available. Okay. And I'll call it. They're gonna still probably gonna call me, and, and okay. you know, and I'll get somebody to come in. At this, and yeah. depending on what the situation is, you know, but we'll get covered. It's not gonna be nothing that's gonna be. Yeah, as long as our. Sure if their phone was gonna go back and forth. No, right and, or... and uh, you know that would that would be more of a pain than anything. And he said uh, he'd rather use his own phone instead of carrying a different phone. You know. Okay. I. I transferred my other phone right. to this line, so I get both my phone you know, yeah. both calls either way. So. Yeah, so our primary concern is that our public safety officials know Absolutely. that when they and call, they, they get an answer at the other end of yeah. the call. And they will have a call. And I mean, they're going to have a, you know, Bob's oh, no. going to take care of, the PD's going to know who okay. is on call when there's somebody else on call. All right. Or else they'll still call me and I'll make sure somebody's going to be there. Yeah, okay. So, you know, and, uh, we returned the police after we took care of cleaning up downtown and stuff on Friday, so. That's right, excellent. They were right. very helpful. So us. I do have one wish for all of us that, how can I phrase it, that we don't put your green snow pro new skills oh. to, to, uh, to the test too early. To the test. Yeah, to <laughs> period. I would just assume we never put it to the test, but, but anyway. And the going. email on the other thing we talked about today. Yes, I will. T I will say. Yep. I will talk about it here. But okay. thank you, George. So, All right. thank you. Have a nice yeah, evening. You too. What George is referring to is um, I had worked on the budget about the law uh, dollars, et cetera, et cetera, and asked George to sit down with Caroline to review it, which the, the two of them did on Friday, I think. And the recommendation that uh, Caroline Mike made that George is fine with is that we hold off on it just because there were enough. You know, it's the it's the salt. Yep. It's largely the salt. Uh, we don't think there's an issue with the money that we uh, saved for some of the personnel issue. We may be more than okay, but just one load of salt could go. Poof. Yes. So we're gonna we'll put it off. What George said is that all of the stuff is available at Middleton Lumber. It's not like we're ordering it from Nebraska. And it, you know, so even though it'll be later in the fiscal year, we ought to still be able to be fine. Uh, sign the purchase order, he picks up the stuff, and we'll get the invoice in Middleton with the split. So, okay. that's the how does that sound? Is that sounds great? All right, did I get that right, yep, George? Yeah, no, we just didn't want to put no, you know, we didn't yeah. put nothing in jeopardy. So, all right, thank you. All right, have a nice evening.
I don't see any other department head, Joe, do you? Do you know anything about the Lamprey Trucking Cooperative? I have not heard. All right. Nothing. They haven't even set a date for next meeting. Okay. All right. So we are we're going to do our signing party. Okay. All right. So what we are doing is signing a whole mess of closing documents associated with. Uh, closing on the USDA loan for the culverts. This was the loan where the town authorized us to uh, finance at least $380,000 for the culverts. And <clears throat> we are closing on the loan at $350,808. So it's almost $30,000 less than what we were authorized to borrow. 350,808. So all of the documents reflect the 350,808. 350, and I'm just going to point this out, Jody Hillen, to the closest that I can see doing. So this was something that's oh, that only our attorney had to sign, but we will uh, overnight this with the rest of our things, and that is that you know there's no pending litigation against the town. So he signed that on our behalf. All right. Uh, this is the loan resolution that we signed last April, and the USDA asked us to um, change the loan amount here to what the actual amount is and to initial it. Okay. So, let's do that. Hi. Hi. We've started our signing party, which may take a while, so I think when we're done this first document, we'll... we'll you go right talk. ahead. Okay. Because otherwise we'll, we'll take up too much of your time. I would have been here so when came the initial down. Fire in South Berwick. So. And then that's what George said. That's what So what said. this mm. this was the resolution we did in April, April seventeenth, and we were certifying to all of these things that we had a town meeting, that our town clerk took minutes of the town meeting, that we agree that we're going to pay, we're going to pay back the loan. We're you know we're not going to be in default. We're good citizens, uh, all of that. And the vote at that meeting was three to nothing. We were all here. And I signed it, Kate notarized it, and sealed it, and all this sort of stuff. So today, what they're asking us to do, essentially say, is all, this, all of this still true? Yeah. So I, the undersigned, as chair of the select board, Town of Rollinsford, New Hampshire, hereby certify that the select board of such association is composed of three members, of whom three constituting a quorum. Mm -hmm. That's the, actually it's two constituting a quorum, but there were three at this meeting. Correct. Uh, were present at a meeting thereof, duly called and held on the 17th day of April, 2017, and that the foregoing resolution, all of this, was adopted at such meeting by the vote shown above. I further certify that as of December 1st, 2017, that's our closing day, so all of our documents have to uh, be anchored at December 1st. The date of closing of the loan from the United States Department of Agriculture said resolution remains in effect and has not been rescinded or amended in any way. Dated this first day of September 2017. Okay, I will do that. All right. If you don't have on your list, Corey, this is the loan resolution from the USDA. I'm just going to put this. Do you need to? Oh, yeah. Yes. All right. Would you make sure it comes? Yeah. Exactly. All right. That's Mark, the we're all set. That you sign. Okay. Good evening. I sent your budget along to the budget. Yeah, I sent it to uh, Michelle. Michelle Small. Same one you gave me, and I forwarded it to them. Okay, so, yeah. has anybody, any select board members at that meeting? I'm, I'm the ex officio, so I will be there. You'll be there. Okay. I missed last year's with the police and the fire. I don't know why, though. How is it? Yeah. I think I represented you yeah. for whatever reason. Yeah, I don't know why. Well, you know, I'm, you I'm the ex officio, so I'll be there in support 100%. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's not like the budget changed that much as only a couple items that we've already discussed, but. Uh, I'm going to, when that all, all 
13 of them, however many we have around the table. I want to explain the plans and sure. things that we've discussed before and why we need to be moving on where we're going. Yes, and I would say, you know, have a frank discussion on the salaries piece. That's where I'm headed. Yeah, absolutely. That's where I'm yeah. headed. But actually, uh, just so you guys know also, it's the fact that we just came back from South Florida and had prior. Like, like George sort of hinted at that. The, the, the Thistle Pig there, that restaurant mm -hmm. downtown, that fire in one of the ovens in the basement. They filled the basement in there, first floor level with smoke. It was, a it was you know, a small incident, but it's, it's always the byproducts which cause the problem. So that's why we were over there helping okay. them take care of that. That's but one thing that we've discussed with them, because you know they lost their chief not so long ago when, when Chief Cronin passed oh, away. Right, right, right. So they have a new regime over there, and they're being a little more proactive. And it kind of ties into the fact that we've had our discussions about personnel, is that we're going to start probably initiating an automatic mutual aid thing between our community and their community just because of our issues and they're having the same issues. So that if we get like a confirmed building fire and smoke in the building and all that tonight, they don't uh, come here and we're going to go. It's just that much more getting people on the road right away and not yeah. having that delay. So you know that our new uh, full-time assistant is a firefighter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I encourage you to have a conversation with, you know, George and him and see if there's something that can be arranged, you know. Well, I guess that kind of would matriculate all the way up to you guys. I mean, it would come. If he's here in town and, and he wanted to become a member, and he has the ability to be able to leave if they're cutting trees well, or that's, the lawn or whatever. Exactly. So we'd have to figure out what works yeah. and what doesn't work. But it, it starts with a conversation with you and George and, and Ed, so. Yeah, I mean, that may work because we have a member in our fire department who's also, he works for the Elliott Road Department, but he was on Elliott Fire. But he moved to Summersworth, so he's come and joined us. And with him being on the road department over there, when they get calls during the day, they're allowed to leave. Yeah. So we could almost mimic something like that. Yeah, so I, I encourage you to explore yeah. that possibility. I would definitely do that. Okay, excellent. All right. Count on that. All right, I have a couple of purchase orders here that I'm going to need to square up on. Uh, first one's one. Three two three, and it's to an individual. His name is Ken Desmond. Comes all the way down from Bath, Maine. That's up there, ways. Right? Mm. Bath, Maine. He comes down and does our annual pump testing, which the trucks have to be certified on an annual basis. They have a certain parameter that they must fit into in order to be certified enough so we can use it for firefighting. So he comes down and usually does it every November. Came down, took care of our equipment. Both trucks passed. We did engine three only because. We had to, have even to. though it's going away. Yeah, have to. We still have to make sure we have that window where we're going to be within the standards of something not be right. So uh, that, that's a purchase order, and it's for 363 Mr. Denton. It's kind of a contractor on his own. He does ours, he does Sunsworth and Elliot. All on the same day, he does one, then another, then another, then another. He does his legion, so if anybody looks wondering what it was, it's just a you know, testing. And he uses the legion parking lot? He uses the and boat people come to him? The, the boat ramp with the legion. Yeah, some of <laughs> We start out with our truck, and then some of it comes over, and then Elliot right? comes over, oh, and then we come oh, back. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes about when 40 minutes. Everybody wonders why they're throwing water into the oh, way. Yeah. They're circulating the water. Yep. Right. Exactly right. right. So, uh, move to accept purchase order 1323. To Ken Desmond for annual pumping testing on engines one and three for a total of $363. I'll second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 I have my paper clip, so. Sullivan Tire, this weekend while well, one of the vehicles was out running around to toy drive, we had up at the uh, uh, greenhouse that we do on an annual basis. There was two calls during the weekend and parades and came up with a flat tire. And the utility does not have a spare tire. So uh, there's no place to carry it. That's the issue with it. It never has one. So we had to get emergency repair to take care of it. And the other issue that we have is if we take it out of service, if we, all the equipment that's on that, we have no place to put it. And that carries the extra crate, the extra casing equipment. So if we had 
you know, Jaws of Life thing. So we had to make the emergency call. It was, uh, this is number 1324, Sullivan Tire is the uh, vendor that we use. So they came over and put a new tire, did the replacement under that emergency uh, caption. So I'm sure that probably adds a few dollars to the bill. 247.20, Sullivan Tire. Uh, move to accept purchase order 1324 to Sullivan Tire for emergency service of tire replacement on utility one for $247.20. I'll second that. Any comments, questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Just to update you on where we are, uh, you're aware the command vehicle is sitting in the station. No, that's wonderful. It is. We got it last Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, our struggle and hurdles that we're trying to get over now is getting the radio equipment taken care of. We had a quote from Two Way, who's a vendor, but because the vehicle kept getting pushed back, pushed back, pushed back, that initial packet that they gave us has expired because there's a time stamp on these things. For multiple reasons. And I think the main reason is, yeah, you know, 10% more <laughs> as time goes by. Yeah, so, yep. So at 7.30, the salesperson for two ways is going to meet us at the firehouse. And we're going to sit down and iron it all out between getting the command vehicle ready to go and also ordering the radio for the new engine. Because we have to fill out a certain amount of paperwork that has to go through the state so Motorola can purchase the radios. So we have to get all that done. And then we're going to try to get a time frame. And what that is leading to is that if I can get all this stuff ironed out, next week I can come back with an actual purchase order for what the amounts will be for the, for the vehicles. Will, uh, will the work be done in time such that the invoice will reflect 27? That's the goal. I'm going to okay. try to tune that into him tonight. Okay. He says to be done as soon as we can. Now, that's subject to how quick they get the equipment. Typically, it's not a long time. That's why we're going to try to get the engine stuff squared away now and ordered because leaping forward to the engine, um, Danny Tuff Capita is going to go out on the 10th or the 11th and do the final inspection. The truck should be arriving in town sometime around the 15th. It's, it's pretty much done. So uh, tonight we're going to go back and we're actually going to sit down. Uh, our last big step is the lettering. How we want that on the fire truck. We have some ideas on what we want. Um, so we get that done. That goes to Jerry McKay. And that gets done. And not so much going on the check boxes. So, you know, once once this closing is done, which is happening this week, we should sit down and go through those terms and conditions of the grant to make sure we're we yeah. know what to do. Is yeah. That, so I'll I'll email you and see if we can find a suitable time to sit down and do that if that's okay. Yes, yeah, because I remember with Caroline. All that. Yeah. yeah. So some of the things Caroline may be able to help us with, you know, some of the we're gonna have to coordinate with DES because they will at least want the opportunity to have someone here when yeah, we shoot the engine. To be here when it's all done. Yeah. Yeah. So we can so. coordinate. Yeah, we can at least get our ducks in a row because once the engine arrives, I've had numerous discussions with our personnel that things are gonna yeah, quickly. there's at some point the 90 day thing kicks in. I don't know. I don't know whether it's when. I don't think it's when it gets here. I think it's when you accept it, which is not. Once it, I don't. I don't know. But we need to. We need to sit down and make sure we understand what it says. Because it'll be here, but as far as that term accepting. Yeah, it, yeah. So let's. It may sit here for a week before we get a radio in it, and it's actually serviceable. Yeah. And then we got to switch all the equipment and stuff around. And I have somebody coming in that we're going to look at to take all the lighting that's all the updated stuff from when the engine was refurbed 10 years ago. We're going to try to take all that equipment off and put it on engine one because it's up to the newer standard. Engine one is antiquated with the lighting system that's on it. So we're looking into doing that too. So there's all kinds of moving pieces. Yeah, here. I know. It's complicated, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm trying to schedule all this stuff to get it done and up and running in a timely manner. But I'm trying to still try to beat the snowfall before it gets too bad. And I think what we're going to end up doing as a, as a department is once we get the truck, it's in service, it's ready to go. We're going to be spending and running engine one more through the winter and the bad months. I don't want, I want people out and confident and comfortable with driving out there in the new truck. I want somebody out there that's even myself because I got to do it um, and have an issue. Mm -hmm. So we're running the other one 
primary, we'll use that one as mean until we get to the better ones. Then we can do a lot more extensive stuff and make sure we're up and running. That's my plan at this point. I okay. want to put somebody in a position where it doesn't go well. Means I mean, I may be one driving somebody. Sounds like uh, Bill Belichick. To make sure you put your players in a position to be successful. That's exactly right. That's what this game is all about. Too. That's, that's <laughs> what every good employer is supposed to be doing. That's what we all should be doing. So. Yeah. I yeah, fully exactly understand. Right. Good. All right. So that's what we are. Okay. It's whew. all the moving it's pieces. Exciting. Yeah, what yeah, color is the command vehicle? Do we know? It's white. Um, you could have got a red one. We had the, the, <coughs> the government bid was 32, 33, 2. If you wanted a red one, it went to 36 and change. Really? Yeah. Is that just because of availability? It could be paint, 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 co paint color? Oh, it's cost of paint and availability. It's yeah, it almost looked like three grand more. Great. Well, thank you for enjoying white. Yeah, I don't mind white. Half <laughs> the stuff in the barn is still white, so I just don't do that. I mean, it's, I wasn't crazy. I mean, I don't have to have the red stuff. The fire truck has me being a traditionalist and whatnot. I wanted to switch back to the red side, and we kind of discussed some of the reasons why. As far as the command here, if it goes not, I think what we can do is have some kind of wiggle room. So that's All right, I'm wonderful. Well, thank you for the report. Okay, just trying to So is this will pick up and running? I mean, are they going to be able to serve like this weekend? Yeah, there's people sitting at the. Uh, at Inquiring the, folks, what would like to know? Well, there's people sitting at the dinner table getting ready to have their dinner with their glasses of wine. And they said, oh, we don't need to go anywhere. And all of a sudden it's like, well, yeah, you do, mm -hmm. because but the fire department owns this building now, so yeah. we need to evacuate the building until we deem it safe for you to come back in. I'm sure probably by now everybody's back in there. Okay. Just like because right. you never know. I mean, you may not see fire, but that doesn't mean anything behind that wall and sure. what it wants to do. Yeah. So that building is so chopped up and, and been opened up in so many different ways that it would be very easy for fire to spread mm -hmm. quickly in a lot of places. There. So mm -hmm. we've had multiple ones in there before. And we're all aware of what it takes. So anything else for me? Uh, there's no going to be. There's no ice rink this year. No one stepped up that has knowledge of ice or interest in rice on the rec committee, so you won't need your services. Because I know all of, at least the old boards and some of the plastic and all that stuff is stored out behind the firehouse, so yeah. I mean, if it does ever come to fruition, yeah. it's all there. Okay. Yeah. And it's all right there? It's not disturbing? No, it's out in the back, it's under the eaves, we have it okay. covered in a, in a different piece of plastic, so it's, it's yeah. somewhat protected, so I mean, okay. it does eventually move forward, all that stuff is still there. Okay. And we're glad to support it any way we can. So, yeah, unfortunately, if nobody steps up, nobody steps up. I mean, Sean mm -hmm. Glitter did it all last year. But it became a hassle. Yeah, it's time. a commitment. Didn't, yeah, allow it's it to, a commitment. didn't allow it to fit, so. Yeah. Well, thank you for letting me know that. Yep. Pass it on to our members. And we'll do what we have to do. All right. Have a thank nice you. evening. Just the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck with the negotiating. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, Jody, we'll go back to our signing party. Sure. Okay, so this is all set, right? So we just yes, that one. We just did. Okay. All right. This is this one. Corey is called a resolution of governing board or governing body, something like that. Okay, and there are going to be three copies, and we're going to sign all three. So. <clears throat> So it says that we are a majority of the governing board, thank God, for the two of us, and um, that we haven't, you know, we haven't made any changes that were authorized with the issuance of the 350808 that um, we're going to pay it off, that we're going to follow the schedule, the payback schedule, that the majority and the treasurer will have signed the bonds, which we will. Uh, blah, blah, blah. That's pretty much it. Maybe I should read it. It is, does say it's a resolution, though. You know what? I'm, do you mind? I'm just no, going to read it. No. All right. A resolution of governing board. The undersigned, at least a majority of the governing board of the issuer and the treasurer of the issuer, the town is the issuer, hereby certify, one, that a meeting of the governing board of the issuer was held with respect to the issuance of the bonds defined below. Two, that notice of said meeting was afforded to said officers and the public in accordance with the provisions of RSA 91A, as amended, and the applicable rules and bylaws of the issuer, if any. Three, that at least a majority of the governing board were present throughout said meeting. Four, 
that the following votes were adopted at said meeting, all as being in the best interests of the issuer, and five, that the resolution set forth below have not been repealed, amended, or rescinded as of the date hereof. So they're harkening back to the town meeting and the fact that they had public hearings before the town meeting. Voted to authorize the issuance of $350,808 general obligation bonds, the bonds, of the issuer, which were heretofore authorized by the issuer on March 18, 2017, such bonds to be dated December 1st, 2017. Voted to sell such bonds, said bonds to the purchaser, purchaser, uh, with the principal amounts, maturities, premium, if any, redemption provisions, if any, and interest rates specified on Schedule A attached here to and made a part hereof. Voted to issue the bonds in substantially the form set forth in Schedule B attached here to and made a part hereof. Voted to authorize at least a majority of the governing board and the treasurer to sign the bonds or to have said signatures printed in facsimile on the bonds and to affix the issuer's seal thereto. Voted to authorize the treasurer to deliver the bonds to the purchaser against payment, therefore. Voted to authorize at least a majority of the governing board and the treasurer to execute and deliver a signature and no litigation certificate with receipt, a no arbitrage and tax certificate, an IRS form 8038G in substantially the form presented to this meeting, and such other documents as may be necessary or appropriate to accomplish the sale, <coughs> excuse me, and delivery of the bonds in accordance with the foregoing and voted to authorize the issuer to serve as its own paying agent with respect to the bonds. So I will ask for a motion to adopt this resolution of the governing board. Make a motion to accept the resolution of the governing board um, from the town of Rollinsford to uh, New Hampshire. Uh, just, res just adopting the resolution of the governing board with regard to the general uh, general bonds, general obligation bonds. So, <laughs> all right, I have a motion on the floor to adopt the resolution. I will second the motion to adopt the resolution and call the question. All those in favor say aye. Aye. We will now sign this resolution. Please don't add a date. It's already dated 1st of December. The treasurer will sign it tomorrow. We'll get the seal tomorrow. And there are going to be two copies, Jerry. Three originals. these other documents, the uh, signature and no litigation certificate with receipt. So I'll just read the beginning of this. We, at least a majority of the Board of Selectmen, the Governing Board, and the Treasurer of the Issuer do hereby execute this certificate to certify, represent, and covenant as follows with respect to the bonds, the proceeds authorizing the bonds, that there's been no crease in the total indebtedness, that no debt has been incurred pursuant to the proceedings, that none of the proceedings have been repealed, rescinded, or amended, that the proceedings were conducted in accordance with the right to know, that certified copies of the proceedings have been, have been delivered to Divine Millimet and Branch, uh, and we, the said officers, further certify that we are the duly chosen, qualified, and acting officers of the undersigned. That there was no vacancy in any of our offices at the time the proceedings took place, that as such officers, we have signed the bonds, this certificate, a resolution of the governing board, the no arbitrage, which were all of these we are about to sign, that we have approved the sale of the bonds to the purchaser, that the bonds bear the sale of the issuer, that the undersigned treasurer certifies that the bonds were delivered, uh, that there's no litigation affecting the validity of the bonds, and uh, that 
We certify that to the best of our knowledge and belief at the time the bonds were sold to the purchaser, information furnished to the purchaser, were and are true in all material respects and did not and do not contain any untrue statement of a material fact, and so on. Are you ready to sign a signature no litigation certificate with receipt? So All right, we will do that. Three of these. Here's one. Next set of documents is the no arbitrage and tax certificate. So it's nine pages of stuff. You're more than welcome to read through them. My understanding of what all of this is is that we are attesting to the fact that we're not making money off the fact that we are borrowing some money from the USDA and that we're not going around now and we're going to take that and we're going to try to make some money off of loaning it to somebody else at a bigger rate and, you know, and sort of arbitrage all of that. We're not doing anything. that. We can barely, whatever it is, buy salt Very for the town. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's all that this no arbitrage and tax certificate states. We went through that. It's the exact same thing we signed for all of our other bonds early in the year. So I am ready to sign it. Three of those. Are they all going to be free? There, there's one that's only one original, which is the next one up. But the rest of are. Three. There was also only one of the first one that we signed, which was the loan resolution. Yeah. And then been in All right. This is, let me just say we sign this one. This is the bond itself. This is the general obligation bond. So we promise to pay to the United States of America, acting through the Rural Utility Service, here and after referred to as the government, or registered as signs, the principal sum of $350,808, together with interest thereon at the annual rate of two and three quarters percent payable in 58 consecutive semi-annual installments of combined principal and interest with the first 57 installments in the amount of $8,820 and the 58th installment, we probably won't be here then, and the 58th installment in the amount of $8,540 payable on June 1st and in December 1st of the years 2018 through 2046, inclusive. That's 30 years. I might be retired by then. And that's sort of uh, pretty much all that it's, you know, it's it just, you're, you're, um, you're welcome to read through that. Okay. In witness whereof the issuers caused this bond to be signed by at least a majority of its governing board, that's us, and countersigned vice treasurer, we're having the treasurer sign all of these things tomorrow, and it's okay. seal affixed here too as of the 1st of December 2017. I am ready to sign. So moved. All right. 
And there was just one copy of this. This is the bond, and there's just one original. Twenty forty. What did I say? Twenty forty six. The good news is that the culprits have at least a seventy five year life expectancy. So my kids are going to be like, "Here, mom, put that in." That's right. How about that? All right. This was. Oops. I Do you have an extra paper clip? Oh, you put the last one. I took them. Oh no. Let me see if I got them on. That's all right. It's just this is one set. I was keeping the sets um, together, but that's okay. This is, thank you, perfect. This is the IRS Form 8038G, which was referred to in some of the other documents. And uh, it, it is our bond council, which, who is attested to the fact that we are a tax exempt governmental entity. And we had a conversation with, I had a conversation with the bond council back when we were uh, starting all of these applications for the municipal bond bank as well as the USDA. And we had another conversation uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago so that she could attest to the fact that we are tax exempt and we're not making any money on any of these things that we own, the stuff that we're building or buying or this sort of thing. And it only requires this only requires one board signature. So unless you have an objection, I will sign these. Signature of issuers authorized representative. December 1st, notice she didn't trust that I was going to She's already got that in there. Because not typing in today's date is really, you know, you really have to think about it. Mm -hmm. But this is it. Oh, no, wait, the one where me and my kid signed was for the basement. That was fun. All right, paper clip it. <laughs> All right, what's next? All right, that concludes our signing party. <coughs> part A, but it includes the board signing party. So tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, <clears throat> the treasurer will be here. And we'll sign uh, the pieces that require a treasurer's signature. Most of them do, but not all of them. Okay. And uh, our town clerk will affix the seal. Okay. And on top of that, one of them requires a justice of the peace or a notary's, I think, about the bond itself. And so she, she either she or Andrea can serve as that. So that's what will happen. Uh, Nine o'clock, roughly, in that time frame, after which Caroline will overnight this whole packet to Divine Millimet, or, you know, bond attorney to Grinnell Correct. in Concord. And then uh, she does whatever she needs to do with these things and will deliver, have them delivered, not personally, but they will be delivered to the USDA in time for a, a closing on Friday, December 1st, which does not require for us to be there. And the money will be wired at that time, that day, to our PDIP account. Excuse me. Uh, Caroline is uh, right now uh, looking at uh, how to wire at least the principal that we borrowed from Kenny Buck Savings Bank to Kenny Buck Savings Bank, so we can close that out. And hopefully they'll they'll send us a bill for the interest. That would that would be the best way to, to do it. Because 
trying to time when we get the money and blah, blah, blah. So we can repay the principal, no problem. It's the interest that we have to wait for the USDA money to get first. So that's the schedule of events by December 1st. The loan will be fully realized. Thank yeah. goodness. Yay. Okay. So you're going to make it, take it I think they've extracted a pound of flesh from several of us collectively. <laughs> All right, back to the agenda. <clears throat> so uh, I said that I would look at our budget to ensure that we would be able to uh, pay the final um, Royal Tanner bill, which we will be able to do. Um, there are a couple of opportunities uh, for the money, so we don't have it yet, um, but I anticipate it will be, you know, somewhere between three to five thousand um, dollars. Oak Street Boundary, uh, let's table that. Uh, paid holidays for employees on probation, we're going to table that too because I haven't touched base yet with the New Hampshire Municipal Association. We've been playing, we've been playing telephone tag. All along the falls this week. Thanksgiving. Yes, well, if they're, if they're uh, the Thanksgiving Day holiday, mm -hmm. yes. And so it only affects our non-salaried uh, or non-exempt person, and in this time she is not putting in for it. Correct. Right? Correct. So. But that was, my, that was just my question, because I yeah. reread our policy, and I see nowhere in there. Oh, it does say, no, it does say something about probation and, and not being paid for the first six months for holidays. I did, I found it. Did I email it to everybody? Last, last, last week. So I did see the, we, I know we didn't find it here last Monday on a cursory read, but when I was home uh, before Thanksgiving, I did, I said, oh, there it is. And I thought, is that it? Will not secure paid holidays during the first six months of employment. Where did you find it? Uh, you mean what section? I didn't put that, huh? I don't okay. know, but it was clearly there. You know, if we don't like that, and we may not like that, we can we can rethink it. But right now, mm -hmm. uh, Ed did not put in mm -hmm. uh, for uh, he's on he's on probation. George's salary, so I, I right. continue to say that that's not a relevant piece for a salaried person. That's the part that I want to verify with the municipal, not with the municipal association, but they're, they're going to give me the, uh, the name of a, an HR consulting firm that uh, would not cost us anything. And so that's what I want to pursue, just so that we get a better grounding. And, you know, maybe they'll advise us to rethink that or to make it more precise. Okay. Well, it also says here that Part-time employees who work at least 15 hours per week will be compensated for holiday. Holiday compensation for part-time employees who work at least 15 hours per week will be prorated. Our transfer station agents did not put in for it. But they don't work on Thursday. But it's still a holiday. So they, they are 15-hour employees, so they get holiday pay. Like, say they don't work Mondays. But I'm a point eight employee at my work. And the holiday falls on a Monday, so it's due for Monday. Caroline has done this before in the past, so I would just ask her about that. Okay. I'll see you. Thank you. All right, so that's what that is. Uh, Janitor's wages. Now, I was told that we had an email, but uh, I think I'm woefully behind in processing email. It was from Richard. Did you did you get something from Richard? Mm, I'm not gonna say no, but let me double check. So now I think I have it here.
I, I, I think uh, he, he thought he sent it to us, but I, I don't see it. But I know what it is, so I can, I, he, is, he was here, and I read it on Caroline's machine, thinking that I had just missed it, but I, don't, I didn't miss it. I don't have it. Did you find anything? So what, what Richard's letter in sum said is that he very carefully put out an analysis of what other um, custodial help make in surrounding areas, which you may not be you may you may not be surprised to know is woefully different from what he makes. Correct. And so he was I don't know what his currently current hourly rate is, but he was asking for a dollar plus increase to fourteen dollars and I think it's thirty five cents, whatever that letter said. And because he takes two weeks off, it is still within the budget that we proposed. Okay. When does he take two weeks off? I don't know. That's, okay. He just, he just does. I mean, he's, you know. Okay. Um, so we, we he don't. Got, he's not paid. No, he's okay. not paid he's for just that. He's just, I mean, because, he, because there are at least two weeks when he doesn't work, sure. he'd never, he, the, the, what he was saying is, I never use up all my budget budget because there are at least two weeks where he doesn't work. Okay. So it, the budget as it currently proposed would allow for this increase in pay to what I think was $14.35. Okay. Well, he has taken on more responsibility. He's chairman of Joint Loss right now. He is doing the supplies for this building and the highway department He mentioned right that. And he is, so that can then start yes. shopping. What did you call that? General shopping? I forgot what you called it. But you know what I mean. Yes. Central purchase. Central purchasing. Thank you. Central so, store, central receiving. Yes. Um, so it made sense to me. Um, I would, um, here, here's what I'll do is I'll tell him, unless you prefer I not, that we, we had a positive response, but we didn't have your letter, and so we didn't really act on it. Okay. And so we'll act on it when all, you know, we can actually see the letter and be, I, I don't want to try to remember the, the amount. Because we're still going to have another budget meeting too, right? Yes. Yeah, so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, sounds good. That's what that is. Ah, and so he, he also requested that he be uh, given a town credit card. He he has a Home Depot, but in in looking for these supplies or whatever, he's going to go to wherever the the price is the best, and it may not be Home Depot. And so if he had a town credit card, that would allow him to shop wherever. So it would follow the same, uh, uh, you know, he would have to sign the same sort of agreement that we ask other recipients of the town credit card to sign. No more than $200 in one uh, shopping in one, for one item. Um, because he can do his online looking and just tell Caroline to order it. If it were online, he may be physically somewhere. Right, he could be physically at a at Walmart. Or, I, you know, um, let me look that up. Could be right. Could the policy could say that department ends, in which case we need to. Because if it. we're not, because of course, we're still driving to Walmart to get paper towels and hand soaps. We're obviously not using our municipality discounts that we would get through the like the WBB or something like that. There are municipal discounts. Mm -hmm. Is he aware of that? How do you know about that? We cannot work. Non-profit. Non I don't pay full fee for anything. Paper towels, mm. tissues, soap, you name it. So, all right. So, I can uh, look back at the policy and see what the policy says and see if we need to amend it. Okay. 
But I, I'm otherwise, so we've already given him a credit card, not, not a credit card, it's a, it's a, it's a merchant card, right. which acts to as the same store. thing to one store. Right. So we would take that back, right. right, as we have with others, right. and just say, here's the town credit card. Right, because I don't want mine, so it will be full anyway. Correct. <laughs> Correct. So I'll take a look at that and see if we need to amend it. So that was actually a good thing to know. Yeah. But I'm otherwise. Um, like, I like his initiative. He does a great job, and I have no problem with that. But um, there's no, no sense why we can't create a spreadsheet and say we just haven't paid towels, blah, 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 blah. And, and, and I do create a spreadsheet of things we order. So we can dish up and pay towels and stuff that we use on a daily basis or a monthly basis and have a spreadsheet and everybody fills up the spreadsheet and it gets ordered, either through Caroline or through whatever. He does get things other than, I mean, he gets supplies for this building, cleaning supplies. Correct. Well, if, if you have an idea of how you might like this to work, perhaps you can chat with him. Okay. And he may, he may... some other ideas. Yeah, I'm going to see him on Monday anyway. Okay. All right, so we'll table Monday that. I'll see him. Uh, joint loss, job descriptions. Monday morning. Okay, uh, welfare, we're tabling that until we can meet again. Well, we do have a non-public for that, Caroline sent an email. I'm sorry? Caroline sent an email for non-public. For tonight? Yes. Oh, okay, all right. So let me just put it here so we don't forget it. Okay, so we'll do this right at the end. Okay. Okay. Is it a welfare? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. So, but we're done with uh, the uh, town um, administration ongoing items, and so now we'll do the standing items. So, uh, board member and activities. I have a stormwater seacoast coalition meeting this week, okay. and a budget committee meeting this week. Okay. Nothing until joint loss on Monday and emergency management systems with the chief on Monday and rec on the 10th of December and rec presentation to the budget committee on Wednesday the 6th. Yep, so, so this Wednesday the budgets are the RFD, the RPD, and the library. Yeah. Okay. So, Building permits. Wait, we're not there yet. Um, what do you have? The rec, um, the board has to decide on the teen camp, are you, are you fine if we have to go to a 10 to 1 ratio? As opposed to 10 to 1 counselor to teen? Yes. As opposed to? Um, it, right now it's like a 7 to 1, 8 to 1. For the younger ones? For the older ones. The younger ones are like a six to one and a seven to one. Is the ten to one? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to say whether I'm fine because yeah. it does it. Is it? Is that a stretch? Is that different from what most communities do? I reached out to Dan, who's a teacher. And Cullity? Yes. And I haven't re I haven't received back. He's still a member of the committee. Um, and then are we gonna allow them to have their cell phones with them? And are we going to allow them to come and go without someone signing them in the night? Because now we're talking to teenagers. So does this have an impact on whether or not there is a teen camp? I'm trying to understand Just what my role is as the... As a select board, we decided that like, we wanted them signed in and out. We wanted we, this, we wanted right. that, we wanted this right. ratio. So. We had said no cell phones because we, now we're talking about a whole different age group. So, what do you want me to bring back to the record? Well, to be honest with you, I, I feel unprepared to okay. have that kind of a conversation without, uh, you know, I, I, I had a better understanding of, of where we were deficient with the summer program with what were essentially younger children. Yeah. And I'm so far removed from teenagers and the like, and I, you know, I want to do 
the thing I think that yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, I think the board wants to do what's proven. We want to be safe. We want to. My question is, does it affect the budget? That, none, that's the, yeah, none of these would affect the budget. Okay, so, all right. So we don't have to yeah. answer that question, like, yeah. from a budgetary point of view. No. Okay. So we have time. So, you, yeah, I, I would say get some more information. I mean, maybe Michael has a pulse on that, but I, I feel like I don't. I, I, I want, you know, clearly I want everyone to be safe. Right. That's the primary motivation. Be safe and then run a decent program. Yep. But I don't, I don't know, I don't know enough to offer any advice on that. Yeah. <clears throat> Fair enough. Okay. Uh, anything else before we go to the building permits? Nope. Okay, super. Thank you. I do remember. I, you know, I don't know why we're not denying it. That was the question. I don't think the question got asked correctly. So uh, I'll try to I'll try to talk to Caroline about this. Okay. Too Should, yeah, Did let me just deny it. Can I put? I a, thought he put. I thought Mike had written. Is this on. Mike? Who is? It just no, says Tom. So no, this is Tom. This is Tom. Hold owner will apply for a variance. And then we said, why, need more info, does not meet setback requirements. And I think that was my turn. So, oh, we'll apply. all right, so let's just deny it. I think we should want to deny it. Um, that was the wrong thing to do, I'll resubmit. Okay. I mean, that's the basis for having someone go to the zoning board, right? To here, I've been denied, and I think for these five reasons that you want to uh, please give me a variance. stumble along as best we can. <laughs> to put on that too, I believe. It's here for the minutes. I didn't put the lot number, but the site property address is 23 Rollins Road. 23 Weeks. Every weeks. I thought it was closer to the front of three months. Mm -mm. Oh, it's the other way. Okay. Building permit 2017-132, um, Lot 4 at Scouts Landing, which is 31 Wentworth Street, uh, map and lot number 2-18-13, um, Chinberg, um, installation of gas fireplace um, and venting only uh, for, for a fee of $90. Um, associated price was $1,155. Tom Clark approved it on this morning.
stamp for this. This is a septic um, design for 141 Rollins Road. Um, tax map lot is um, 170. And it's for septic design. She sent out the state. Septic, tank, septic designs don't come with like, like a per okay. building number. It's just a septic design. Um, we just stamp on the send them to the state okay. for approval. So it was, received, it was received by Tom this morning. Uh, building permit 2017-130, um, 7 Willie Street. Uh, map and lot is 14-44-2, and they're replacing two external doors for $3,650 for a fee of $65. Um, please coordinate with building inspector for required inspections. Tom reviewed this today. Building permit 2017-131, um, 204 Rollins Road, map and lot is 1-21-0, and they are sistering floor joists in the basement, reason ends are, the, are rotting, um, $4,000 um, for a fee of $65. Tom Clark reviewed. Please coordinate with building inspector to, for required inspections. That's your regular one, right? My regular one. Okay. So most of this is still from last time. So I sent off an email to, because like we still have the quote in here from Over. Atlantic from October. Quote for what? We had signed to get the new cans. So I'm not sure if they even know to order them. So I sent her an email and I put copy George on it. Oh, okay, yeah. We have lots of stuff in here that's old, so. Okay. I think they're going to. That's coming out of the transfer station budget, isn't it? Yeah, that was the final the, uh, pushover at okay. 190. Plus the gate. Yes. I know that Caroline mentioned the gate, the, the gate today. Okay. But did they call? Pardon? Did they call? Yes. Good. Awesome. George is trying to push them. Yeah. Because at some point the ground will freeze. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about too. All right, so these are all things we signed tonight. This is all old stuff from before. Mm -hmm. All right. This is... Um, Department of Environmental Services, notice of violation, immediate action required. Department of Environmental Services re records indicate that the water samples results submitted in the monitoring period listed below exceed the maximum contaminant level for drinking water. The following violations have occurred, and they are elevated in arsenic. So date collected was November 1st, 2017. Uh, this notice is dated 
November 17th. Um, actions required. Perform public notice within 30 days of this notice. Certify that public notices were performed within 10 days of performing the public notice. Are we just being copied on this? Did this come to us directly or is this to the Water Department? Uh, this was co-copied to Scott McGlynn, primary operator. He's not our primary operator. Well, he was five years ago. Right. <laughs> We've gone through three, so... <laughs> Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Ray is now a primary officer. I don't Okay. And then Dennis and the town of Wallingford health officer. So we don't want to update that. Can I see that? Yes. Yeah. <coughs> Order to search. So, sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. Okay, it goes to the Wallingford. We'll make sure that um, they do whatever the this water is going to do. Do you want me to do that? We'll let Caroline manage that, I think. Okay. So I'm asking her to please verify that the water and sewer district Does it then will be it? posting as required. Because they're not getting the water till now either, because it takes a week for the snow to get through. Right, but it's not up to us to post. Right. right. So we'll just do our part to try to ensure that it does get posted. All right. So we leave this one. Yeah, let's leave it on the top. Okay. okay. Um, this is a disbursement um, for a stipend for myself for the fourth quarter. All right. I would be happy to sign that. Is that one or two? One. One. Okay. is a request for a disbursement for a chair for all of 2017 state. And authorize that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do yours and you, you do mine. Mm -hmm. There you go. This is uh, FYI, Citizens Bank Charges. Yep, yeah, that's the credit card. Mm -hmm. You said that the board the board wanted to be able to sort of monitor. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, school administration. Can I I can tell you what that is. So when uh, we get a, a whatever it is, it's an appropriation payment schedule from the school district, and we usually get it for I don't know how long it normally is, but. Whenever there's a change, they'll issue a new one. So there has been a change, and it's been decreased. I think if I recall correctly, it's because uh, it's based on the tax setting from the town of Rome. It's based on you know, the, what the DRA said. And so we've gone from uh, dispersing $414,944 a month to $397,848. So there's been a drop, which is always nice. That's what that is, just an FYI for us. Caroline takes care of actually, actually there's an automated process now where they get their money, so I can't remember exactly where it is. But. Okay. Uh, Community Action Partners of Shefford County, or CAP. Uh, the Board of Directors of Community Action Partners of Shefford County coordinate. Cordially invite you to attend the 52nd Annual Meet and Breakfast. Strong Partners Build Strong Communities on Tuesday, December 12th. Um, 2017 from 8.30 to 10 at the Grand Ballroom at the Oaks in Somerset. Very nice. I probably will they do a nice day. breakfast. I had it at my work a couple oh, years ago. Nice. So, uh, this is from the DRA. 
Is that on the contract? It is, contract 2018-2022, assessing services and data verification. Can I say a couple of words I'm about that? I'm lucky. So we got a contract from Avatar. We've not signed it. Correct. And uh, if you recall, I was uh, surprised by the increase, and so I wrote back and I said, oh, yeah, wrong. So they issued another one, but you know that all happened in the last couple of weeks, and we've been doing the closing. And the contract includes this data verification. If you recall, Chad came one night to talk to us about that, mm -hmm. where we do a quarter each year, and we all decided not to do that. Mm -hmm. At least that's my recollection. So the contract shouldn't say that. That aside, what this is, and this is very interesting, this is the DRA who's read that contract and saying, you might want to consider making these changes. Mm -hmm. So that's helpful. So I was happy. I don't know how it is that they, I don't know whether they Avatar had to file it with them, but I thought that was very helpful. Uh, so, uh, but at this point, we, we, we don't have the contract to review because we don't, uh, I haven't asked Avatar to reissue it without the data verification. The DRA recommends that all municipalities use the Department of Revenue Central Contract for Assessment Experience. As they adequately describe and define insufficient details in the entire evaluation process. That's the same content of the So that's helpful. Yes. Oh, speaking of assessing, you've got my research that I did on other towns. Um, it's separated by the you exemptions. Know, had to look at exemptions. Yes. I did. You know, so, I don't think we were all that far off unless no, I read it incorrectly. It did, um, elderly exceptions and then whether we were, um, if we had passed that RSA and what towns did pass that RSA and the blind the blind exemption and who passed that and it then it separated it either alphabetically or by county. So it was quite nice. So. That is the, that's the avatar contract, but I think it's the old one that has the original rate, which is no longer the case, and it still has the data verification, which we don't want. Correct. So I think we can just kind of put that aside. Aside or so You can put it in there until it gets supplanted. Okay. Uh, Tracker County Delegation. Uh, notice of public meeting of the Shreffer County Delegation Executive Committee Friday, December 8th at 9 a.m. Uh, Shreffer Del Delegation Executive Committee members, Shreffer County Cities, Town Mayors, Selectmen, Councilmen, New Hampshire Secretaries of State, um, from Peter Schmidt, the Chair, on November 17th. So noted. <laughs> probably will not be attending. <laughs> oh wait, okay, that was the date that he sent the letter. Okay, wait. Um, notice is next Friday at 8 at 9 a.m. Um, in the County Farm Administration building. Okay, that makes so, it a little bit more. <laughs> so noted. Okay. Uh, approved text. To borrowing up to 20 million for the first six months of 2018. Well, they're going to have a fun meeting. <laughs> well, there, you know, when you look at their uh, the tax effort that Rollins for taxpayers are paying for the county, it is 80 percent now of the town of, of the municipality. Mm. Is it? Uh, it was like 700 thousand something, and the town is just barely 900 thousand. Okay. And this is the bond that's been sitting here for the final bill. Um, I'm not sure if these two were. It doesn't together. seem right. Let me see. That was the bond you were waiting for. Uh, please check. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. We're waiting for the final bill, which just got paid today. So, okay, so we'll fill that out. Let's, can we keep this on the top of that folder? You're not ready to fill this out. Okay. And what's the what's this oil tanner? Oh. Uh, 
session. Two copies of your monthly invoices from October 15th to November 11th. Is that the 7,000? I believe it is. Okay, that was already last week. Yeah, that we've already yep. paid it, and yeah. so that was last week. Again, we'll put it yeah. in last week's order. is checking with Chad. This is, is that another contract? Once again, assessor's agreement. Okay, yeah. that's the contract again. So let me put that in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, now we say paper close. Caroline is going to take that MPO out of there. That's just the 10-year road plan, um, you know, which is in an FYI from Stratford Regional Planning or the, the MPO part of the Stratford Regional. You're welcome to take it as that size reading material if you'd like. Yes, the, they are allow, allowing public, com public comment period from Friday, November 10th to Thursday, December 14th. And then the public hearing for review of the comments is Friday, December 15th at 9 a.m. in the Rochester Community Center, room A, room 1A. And all of that stuff, I'm quite sure, is available on the SRPC website if anybody in the public wants to go look at it and actually, use the comment period. Yeah, I actually put it on Longsford Happenings, too, in case they wanted to make a comment because of um, the concern with the So I thought that was a good time to do it. Mm -hmm. And we hit the bottom of the pile. This is all old. Okay. Yeah. All right, so while you're putting that back together, I'll ask if there's any community input this evening. Yes. Building permits, what are they covered for, like, the interior of a building? If you're making changes that are worth more than $1,500 in value. Okay. And does that apply to businesses, too? I don't know the answer to that. Okay. I would say yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I we get building permits from the mills and from... Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I've from, heard them go through before. So. Yeah. But it, uh, there's... I, I think it's exactly the same. I don't think there's any differentiation. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. Anything else? All right. So... Uh, in just a minute, we're going to go into non-public to discuss a welfare case. And Corey, what I'll do, if you notice the time when we go into a non-public, I will email you the results of the non-public so you can just leave. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do what I did last time. Yeah, is that we do? Did we do that the last time too? Yeah, yeah last we, time I did that. Okay. So I'll and if you don't hear from me, just give me a nudge. Okay. All right. So um, Jody, if you're ready to. Move to go into non public. Let's motion to go into non public for review of fair and welfare. I second that and we'll uh, do a roll call vote. Jody? Yes. Suzanne? Yes. 